We, we, we interrupt our program with a special bulletin. Honestly, most people in the world, they don't care if who's living or not. Most people don't care that you're alive right now. That's what I, I mean personally. Most people don't care. I mean, I really don't know, like, most people, right? I only know, like, my friends and the like, people who I've uh, gathered. These people right over here, they don't care if, if I live or die tomorrow. Well, I mean, have you tried to connect with them? No. So, you know. But I know there's people I've connected with in the past. Yeah. They don't care. Well, I guess maybe that's uh, an area of, like, uh, trying to define what is friendship, right? Yeah. Uh, trying to find a, a good understanding of that. A lot of people haven't really taken a moment to define that, right? They're walking around with very loose morals, loose ethics, uh, and, and, make, and making justification excuses for everything, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that allows for a lot of people to be shitty, right? And, yeah. and it, 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 draw, it will draw someone like myself, you know, I lived in D.C., experienced a lot of that to be very isolationist because of that, right? Um, but I found uh, having these conversations like we're having right now and, and defining our traditions, you know, we'd come to realize that we share a lot of the same fundamental virtues. Uh, you know, that after some time, you know, we'll find I'll, I'll never stab you in the back. You know, we have a good set of ethics, <laughs> right? Right. right. Um, and that's kind of what's missing. Like when you go to a restaurant after you finish eating, they say, you know, can you let us know uh, how can we make have a better service for you next time, right? We want to improve, right? Do, do people, friend, do friends ever ask themselves that, that same question? Like, or roommates, right? Hey, um, it's been a month now. It's like, how can I be a better roommate? Right? How can it be a better friend? They don't ask that. They don't ask that, right? No. I think that's something that, that needs to be put out there. I think that's kind of important too, right? Yeah. Right? So you want to be an anthropologist? Anthropologist? Uh, I guess you could say that. Uh, do, you, do you say unbiased? Bias? You need, to, you need to stay unbiased, remember? Oh, I'm not, I'm not an anthropologist. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, oh I thought you said well, it's for yeah, anthropo anthropological studies, so mostly like trying to have conversations with my community. One day I'll put it up for like a documentary uh, and kind of show that for the most part everybody agrees. Like the first three questions I asked you, uh, I've asked the same question for like a thousand people here in Richmond. Uh, a lot of these interviews record like nearly 300 and they all agree. I, in my day-to-day -day life, I don't use violence to solve my problems. Uh, with the exception of self-defense of myself and others, it's wrong and immoral to initiate, to initiate force. And I think it's wrong and immoral to violently force my ideas onto other yeah. people, right? Uh, and that's great. We share these great, awesome, fundamental moral virtues then, right? That's a good starting point, right? Yeah. That most people haven't really taken a moment to ask each other that, right? Mm -hmm. That's why it's very easy to think each other like we're secret Desker Morgans or something like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> I understand you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, um, you ever read the book Debeju? The what's the tribe? Debeju. Uh, it's it's an African tribe. It's an anthropology book. I read it a long time ago. They have the water pool, mm -hmm. and I think they allow everybody to go to the water pool. I think that's what it was in the book, and it's it's about everybody can use it, and I feel like everybody should be able to use each other's knowledge. You know, like say I know English really well. Mm -hmm. I teach someone English. They teach you math. But it seems to me like everybody wants to hide their knowledge these days and keep it to themselves instead of expanding, letting everybody grow. Right. I feel that way. I think, um, like, IP laws do that. Uh, so government, IP laws, intellectual property, is not real property, right? Ideas are not tangible, right? Like you're mentioning, right? Ideas can be copied infinitely, right? Yeah. Uh, but what government does, they grant a monopoly on certain patterns of information that prevents anyone from copying. Right, copyright, uh, patents do the same thing. So, like, uh, if I like, um, if, I mean, if I create like a, a music, right, and someone hears me, right? you know, I could just mimic it, right, and create it, something, tweak it a little bit more, right. But you're using your own property, right? You yeah. didn't steal anything my, from me. My music sheet is still in front of me, right? Nothing was stolen from me. My instrument is still here, right? You, you can't steal ideas, right? Yeah. But these these government laws these on monopoly on patterns is what stifles innovation then, what prevents people from copying and improving, right? right. Uh, so yeah, so I, I do see a lot of areas in our community where that stuff uh, stifles and, and, and asphyxiates knowledge itself. Yeah, have you seen um, Chicago hip hop lately? Have you watched no. into any of that? Do you know who Chief Keef is? Who's that? He's a rapper. Do you know who um, yeah, Billionaire Black is? No. Or any of these rappers? They um, basically, one person comes out with, you know, you know doing some dance and stuff, and then they just mimic each other, and it becomes into this thing of just copying each other, but it's tweaked to right. the next thing. And that's kind of how I feel the world's going right now. It's just tweaking. Right. It's innovating now. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's how I feel. <laughs> that I like. I mean, it's kind of like the fashion industry. There's no copyright in there. It's like every day fashion trends are changing all the time, right? Uh, they're not the same as they were last week. And they have to keep uh, adapting uh, if they want to survive in the market, right? You know, no one yeah. has a right to customers, <laughs> right? You have to keep uh, refining your entrepreneurship. 
uh, you know, that's where I say, I guess, an area of free innovation, you, you can find that in, in fashion, right? Yeah. Um, all right, so I'm going to go back to uh, how government is immoral. So I'm going to show you how government is immoral then. What, yeah, what, what is, give me your theme of why government is immoral. All right, all right, I'm going to do it. All right, so you just told me then in your day-to-day -day life, you have a plurality of nonviolent solutions you apply and use to solve your personal problems. You have this. I do have a way of, of handling things nonviolently. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so you so we have this more integrity against that violence. And as a community of individual people here in Richmond, <clears throat> we're told, though, <clears throat> that the only way we can affect any kind of change and make any difference, though, is through government, through politics, through voting, they say. So people vote with their ideas, opinions and preferences. <clears throat> and how best to solve that community problem. <clears throat> Sorry. And in effect, they elect a politician. That politician, his or only job is to legislate those ideas and opinions into law. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You could take government opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone here. If I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and which any point of refuse or resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to run away and escape, I'd be met with more violence or sometimes shot, murder. At the same time, government is even found into more violence because at no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. You have no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give government your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice and how best to spend your own money, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Yeah. Right? So this is how government is immoral then. This organization that calls itself the government only knows how to solve problems then through one way a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Do you feel like people respect the police right now? What's to respect? Their job is to hurt people. Their job is to send peaceful people into cages for victimless crimes. Do you, do you think all police officers are bad? Do you think some are honest? Do you know that they can train a dog to sit even though when there's nothing in the car. Right, absolutely. Yes, they can, absolutely. And the thing they, is, they're they, not... They can always search, no matter what. Right, right. And that's, that bull. happens. That's bull. It right. is. It happens all the time. I mean, they're, they're not consumer-driven. They're not a, a, a subscription service that you can cancel or unsubscribe from a real business, right? You know, I don't like your service, right? Or you can compete entrepreneurially to say, I can provide a better form of security that's not going to be abusive or harmful to you, the consumer. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the individuals in those police force probably maybe there's a tiny few that have uh, inkingly what's going on, trying to do good or whatnot. But the only time you can redeem yourself is by quitting the organization. That's how I feel. Right. Right. The the organization itself is an extortion agency. Right. Uh, yeah. It comes to this point now, like I feel like I can't express and say things now, and it's like you're losing your first amendment almost just if you want to express yourself in a way. Right. And you and then some people they say something. Like, what if I was sitting here and tell you, you could change the military, even they did this in the past, doing one year, two year, three year, four year, five years, and the more years you do, the more benefits you get, and if you complete all five and stay in, let's say, you know, you do one year, you get health insurance forever. You do five, you get health insurance, and your whole family gets it, and you can reach out to extended family of your choice. And if I say something like that, people think that's whack. Right. You know? Uh, what, what so that's kind of what I feel is right, 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 right. the people. Yeah, it's, it's uh, people, I guess it's like a PC culture now, in, in a way, right? You have to yeah. be politically correct. Like, what did you say? It's like, look, I'm just, well, why, why can't I say? This is supposed to be a university too, right? This is supposed to be an open exchange of ideas, right? Yeah. This is not a, uh, a baby crib, you know? This is not a, a daycare center, right? This is supposed to be adults, and we're going to come from a lot of different backgrounds, from a lot of different cultures, and there's going to be some ideas that are not going to clash necessarily, but are going to conflict with other ones. And that's what we're here to discuss, right? A shared center uh, arena of knowledge. Right yeah. to get to a better place. That's the only reason we argue. Right. How, how do you feel about materialistic? Because you see what I'm wearing, an Armani Exchange watch, a, a Louis belt. This is what girls like for some reason. Well, why, I mean, then that's, why do they like this materialistic stuff now? But well, then you're you're telling me that you're wearing this to attract those kinds of girls, right? Yeah, because that's what they like. They it, it, it's I, I hate to say it, but yeah. it, it seems like the girls like satanic behavior. Satanic behavior, <laughs> like paganism or something like that? Oh, not paganism, I'm sorry. Uh, that's entirely different. I don't want to confuse it too. Um, well, I guess I would say, I mean, that's, I mean, there, there's all different kinds of preferences that girls are looking for, right? Uh, I mean, you're, you're like a, a peacock, like an animal. You're, you're floating your feathers here, right? You're, you're putting on a display for in terms of what you're trying to attract, right? So if you're looking for the kind of girl who's into Armani stuff, you're going to attract girls who are into Armani stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you feel about then? Uh, does this match your style and personality? Do you think that 
helps to accentuate because you're, you're communicating. This, this is like this is how I this is like how I like to dress. Okay. You know and all right. And you know it's like you dress like this, you're gonna get you're gonna get called a poser. You're eventually gonna get called a crackhead, a coke dealer, a drug dealer. But it's it doesn't matter, you know, if you the way you should dress. Right. Like I mean, you should be. The, I feel like you should be able to be free to express yourself. I agree a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. Even if you dress in a I, I mentioned a satanic way, it doesn't necessarily mean you portray that life. Right. So right. 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 That? Yeah, I, I agree with that as well. I mean, uh, for the most part, though, what you wear communicates, right? Most communication is nonverbal, right? That also includes uh, your gestures, your mannerisms, uh, what you wear. You're communicating, right? Yeah. Like uh, you're you're giving off signals too, right? Or you're signaling to girls, I'm into Amarni stuff, you know, maybe an interesting lifestyle. Jocks communicate different stuff too, right? I'm into sports, right? And football yeah. uh, and beer pong, right? Um, do people communicate non-verbally through that? So in a way, I guess you're communicating what you're interested in just to draw more of a connection with a different crowd of people, right? Uh -huh. To draw more of closer to that connection. Uh, the, I guess the problem, like you're mentioning, with people calling you posers and stuff like that, I think that problem exists. Oh, I, 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 would, I would admit I'm a poser any day. <laughs> I don't care. It's, I don't care what you believe. I'd rather people think I'm a poser than really. Um, Does it bother you? No. No. Okay. I, I'd rather be known as a poser than as a as a as a thug or a gangster or right. a drug dealer. Right. I'd rather be known as that. You but know? you'd rather no one be calling you kind of these derogatory pejorative names, then, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I would say, under government though, we're forced to contend with that uh, because there's no the public property is uh, prevented from being homesteaded, from being privatized, right? Yeah. Like in your own room, in your house, you're not going to stand up for, for anyone calling you shit, right? You're like, get the fuck out of here, right? If you're going to be a... Uh, uh, yeah, if uh, someone was in my house and they started calling me a piece of shit, I'd be like, man, you don't know anything that I've been through. Right. You know, people, um, like with me, I feel like they see a big house, and they don't, but they don't know what goes on in the house. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like there, there's other events that came before that, you know, right? People, people, people don't know why people do certain things. Like, for an example, I go to Germanic Community College, I show up late to tutoring, you know, and I have a reckless driving charge pending. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're yelling at me saying, you need to call, you need to call. I can't pick up the phone. I'm, you know, in traffic, I'm, I'm, I'm on my, it can wait. It, right. It, you know, it can wait, you know, and they're, they're yelling at me, text, you need a text. I, I tutor underprivileged kids that, that don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I understand when they're late and stuff. And they, they don't understand what, what it's like. For an example, um, in New Jersey, this, the teacher took away a kid's cell phone. And kids are saying, oh, I would beat the kid's ass, I beat the kid's ass. But that cell phone is that kid's money. He has a lot of money on that phone. That's why he beat the shit out of that 62 year old teacher. Yeah, I mean, the teacher shouldn't be touching his property in the first place. That, right? I believe the teacher should not be able to take personal property from you in school either. Right, I mean, even in school though, the kid's not there because he wants to be. He's forced to be. If he doesn't show up in school, places like Texas, they'll send you into a cage. They'll, yeah. they'll find you, right? So it's not like school is a prison for children. What if I told you, now, like, how old are you now? I'm 21. 21. What if I told you, you're going to spend the next uh, 12 years of your life, you have to report here from 9 to 5 o'clock every day. I'd be pissed. You'd be pissed, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's what it is for children. They're not there out of consent because they want to. They can't choose their own teachers. They're moving around like cattle, right? That's all they are. Indoctrination, indoctrination, indoctrination. Yeah, so, of course, the last thing you should be doing is trying to touch some kid's property, right? They're not there out of their willingness consent, Yeah. right? Um, so I guess trying to go back to like I, I, what I see a lot of the problems with a lot of people who, who, who run into folks who uh, unsavory characters is because we're forced to contend under government to interact with those kinds of people like the Westboro Baptist Church right they can come up here in front of your house if they wanted to and yell shit in front of you all day long because it's a public sidewalk but if it was privatized kind of like your room and you make the rules like anyone's welcome as long as they're not asked you're not an asshole right if now you have rules against that kind of unsavory be uh, yeah. behavior right now nobody can get in your face and you can now have in a free society the kind of lifestyle and preferences that matches yours in, in that same community you never have to uh have to engage in and with assholes again yeah how, how, how do you feel why won't police if i hit a car in a mall on private property i'm told they won't show up it's a pen, it's on me. It's my job to get the insurance and all that. They're not right. going to show up. Why? Why won't they? Why do they only show up on public property? Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's a monopoly on security the government has. So there's a lot of um, areas in which like um, mall security can't really enforce because government doesn't like competition. Uh, there's a lot of mall security that can't even be armed because of that. You know, because uh, government uh, strips them of their ability to defend yourself and, and others. Uh, Supreme Court judges have also ruled that. 
ruled that there is no obligation to protect your life, liberty, or property. You know, so maybe that's also why the police officer has no obligation to protect you. Why am I going to waste my time going over there uh, for, you know, for some nitty-gritty uh, paperwork, right. right? So if they have no obligation, they don't need to come over here, right? You're forced through taxes to pay for a service that's not provided, right? That's, yeah, I feel that. That's, that's what it is. In a market, if, if you abolish this monopoly of security and you have thousands of competing security companies, if you don't come up on time, I'm firing you. I'm canceling. Cancel and subscribe, right? Mm -hmm. Or I could compete, right? But then they'll say, look, I've been in business for 20 years. I've always been on time. Look at my customer feedback review. You know, look, five stars out of five stars. You know, three months for free. You know, give us a try. It's like, all right, you sound good. <laughs> I'll give your security services a try, right? Yeah. Um, at least now you're in charge as the consumer, right? But do um, you think the Illuminati is real? The Illuminati. Do you think the government is the Illuminati in a way? Like, like they're doing conspiracies and things like that? Like Illuminati is basically in a way described to me as people who control all, you know, they can control anything, people with the wealth and power and they can make anything happen. The government does exactly that, right? So uh, do you think the Illuminati exists? I don't, I don't know too much about the Illuminati, but in the way that you described it, I mean, that's how government runs uh, everyone's lives, right? Government yeah. wants to take your property, they'll, they'll take it anytime they want. Uh, they want your land, they'll call it eminent domain, right? Uh, if, if they find you breaking the rules, their arbitrary rules you never gave consent to, you know, they'll come in and knock your door down. It happens all the time without a warrant. Yeah, for right? example, um, I was rapping, and you know, like, I don't rap about myself because I, I rap about other people mm -hmm. and lies and stuff, and I put my raps on Facebook, and then the next thing you know, I have feds calling my phone, asking me about it, and, and, give, and questioning me, and it's like, why do, why, why did you need a, a why, did, why do they get a warrant to look into your media? You know, I don't, I don't get that. Why right. should they get a warrant to get into your Facebook and see what you're posting? It's it's a freedom of speech, and it, it's I feel like that's being stripped. I feel like all everything is being stripped. Right, and then at least you can then say that uh, the Constitution doesn't protect you from anything. Then, right? Uh, Two hundred years of evidence to show that it hasn't protected anyone from government intrusion into their life. Government continues to get bigger and bigger. Your freedom of privacy continues to shrink and shrink and shrink. Uh, hasn't worked, right? Yeah. Uh, so at least that's a testament to show that you cannot constrain or have a check and balances of evil. <laughs> evil is like a tumor. It can only continue to grow and grow until it's consumed everyone, right? Yeah. Until it's all over. Now now it's all over the place in our lives where it hurts us and affects right. everyone, right? Um, so how do you feel? So, I mean, so when we're talking about government, all that government is is a monopoly on the services you and I want. I want roads, I want law, I want, you know, ABC has a monopoly on liquor. I want liquor, right? Yeah. Um, but these services, you have no freedom to cancel or subscribe or to compete entrepreneurially, right? right? So that's all that government is. They have monopolized and made it criminal for anyone to compete. If you abolish that government called uh, those government monopolies, now you have market competition. Now you have all kinds of awesome services. Now you have a uh, quality that goes up, the costs go down. You know, I may not afford the next iPhone 6 or 7, but by then I could get I, like... I think it's everybody all cares about right now too. All right. <laughs> it's their cell phone. It, it, I feel like it's coming to what girl can play the most guys, what, what guy can play the most girls. And it's like becoming a competition with that. And everybody's so young. Everybody's so young. Why, Do you why? think they're checking out cell phones? What, the police? No, the girls are saying. Is that, is that what you're saying? Like they're I, checking out. I, like they're like you know they're just texting and and yeah. they, they screenshot and they, they they send stuff to girl other girls and they go this guy said this this guy's saying this yeah and it's turning let's see who can play who right and who can get who and who can make who can dominate and, and it's it's coming into this thing of let's see who can get the most likes on Instagram right who can get the most likes on Facebook and this and that and it's like why do you care just let someone be themselves you know and it's like. It's no, like, then that's a projection, right? Yeah. Uh, someone who goes out of their way to kind of you know, put someone down consistently so it's like uh, they have nothing else going on into their lives, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what a lot of people like to do. They like to like uh, take the share right underneath you when you're feeling so way up high <laughs> in life, right? Yeah. Uh, it's a projection of uh, areas in which they don't feel they have under control themselves. Right. And uh, to make up for that, you know, they'd rather tear everyone else down around them. Um, a lot of that stuff yeah. you could say maybe that's how their parents uh, taught them, right? Tearing them down all the time in childhood, you know, that's what they're learning and now projecting in, in adulthood. Yeah, I, I feel like the only way to really change the world is to get rid of jealousy, and that's something, it's, an, it's kind of an emotion, and you can't really take away that. And I feel a lot of um, violence and what I was saying about the texting, playing people, is done through jealousy. What does that mean, jealousy? What is, how do you define jealousy? Right now, I guarantee you the 
if I if I walked around the campus like this with a belt like that, yeah. people, people are gonna get jealous. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. I don't get jealous. See, but I guess. Well, it's, it's, it's also a fake, by the way. It's not real gold. No, it, right? it's, it's a fake Louis. It's, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> buy, 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 buy the real thing when you get the, the other thing cheaper. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Knockout parents and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, this Armani's real though. Is it? Are you yeah. sure about that? Is yeah. that what you tell people? <laughs> yeah, it is. This is real. This is real. It's five hundred dollar right. watch. Yeah. Is, it communicates a lot of stuff, anyways. Right? It looks like I'm, I'm into style and into fashion. It says like I have a good steady job. Um, I'm economically sustainable. Yeah, things communicate uh, otherwise, right? And, right? Right. If I'm walking around with like holes in my pants and stuff like that, maybe it shows why I'm not into uh, grooming standards and hygiene, right? And that's what I prefer to communicate. Um, or maybe I need help. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm into in a bad situation, and that's you know, hopefully someone can kind of spot that. Right. Um, okay. But in terms of jealousy, I guess that just means uh, envious, right? Like uh, you see someone doing some cool dance moves, now you like to copy that and improve upon it, right? Like, exactly. like music, right? So I don't think jealousy then is all that bad. I mean, I guess you can have a balance, right? Yeah. Uh, too much of it, you know, consumes your life and then uh, you're no longer in charge of your own life. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your life is consumed by how other people live theirs. Uh, and just constantly, I don't know, not living vicariously by them, but it's, it just takes, I guess, the very soul and essence of who you are. Your identity is stripped. Yeah. I understand you. I, I like your thoughts. Um, you seem like a very smart man. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate I, agree, it. I agree with you and everything you said. Thanks, man. I'm Cal. Grind. Right. Um, pleasure, man. I think I'm going to enroll here. Yeah? Um, surprisingly, I've been accepted as a biology major. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? I'm going to try to be an anesthesiologist. And, <laughs> and put people to sleep. <laughs> you know, nice. it, it's, and that's also another thing about being an anesthesiologist. It's like I'm putting someone to sleep. I don't know if they're getting a heart transplant or if they're getting plastic surgery. Right. And that's kind of how the world is. It's a little blind to everything it's, it's you're always blinded you know and everybody kind of always goes back to the past when they see someone but no one really wants to talk in present or about the future everybody always wants to talk about the past though right like you feel that way? yeah yeah they're kind of stuck there um i mean i think sometimes you could talk about the past if it's like archaeology in terms of like self archaeology you know what why am i doing the actions that i'm doing today where is that coming from right yeah. what am i projecting and uh like you could do that through a lot of self-help books and stuff like that and to like have a better understanding of you know knowing thyself but at the same time you can't really get stuck there right mm -hmm. you got to keep moving forward uh you're not you're never going to get anywhere in life if you always keep standing in the same place right, right. yeah right do you, like do you think it's possible for anybody to talk about what's present like right now i'm in an interview with you with the camera you know i see bikes no one talks like that no one tries to make each other smarter anymore i feel like and everybody wants to talk about what this person did back in the day or who's what and it's, it's a little hard to explain but I get it it's, I find a lot of that stuff to be distractions if, too. if I was able to talk to you a little more I could explain it to you I, um, I need to write it though that's a good so outlet I, that's yeah. the only way I can do it yeah 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 just the writing uh, well let me uh, give you a flyer uh, the organization of with is non-political, so it's nothing to do with politics. Uh, we call it Liberty RPA, and we philosophize. So that's the club here. Yeah, well, not a VC. I mean, well, a lot of VC students are a part of it. I used to be uh, go to VC as well uh, for criminal justice. Uh, so it's just uh, a lot of Richmonders here, and so we just get together and philosophize, right? We have these real uh, in-depth conversation about like the social issues of today and uh, trying to delve into a better understanding of ourselves and uh, our environment and, and the world around us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Check us out, man. This is how I, you only on Twitter, man? What? Uh, no, no, I'm on, so uh, we got uh, Twitter, we got YouTube, Facebook, we got a website that has a calendar on there. Is there a way um, I can get in touch with you through this website? Yeah, yeah, there's an email address there. And uh, just send me a message, like send yeah. me more. I personally believe Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that should be taken down. It's just causing drama and shit. That's, that's very true. Uh, I think you, people just need a good vetting uh, system. I think that's why I lost that, right? If yeah. you don't have a good vetting system, you allow all the shit to come in, right? Unfiltered, right? Uh, and you have a, my vetting system is ethics, right? If you have a good set of ethics, good moral foundations, not I, and start to get to know you, I could tell that I could trust you, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we create that rapport. It's like I know you'll never backstab me. You know we have a good respect for private property, for you know self ownership. We can we can go places from there, right? But if I just let anyone else into my life who doesn't have that, it's like yeah, you know what's to be expected, right? Our values are not consistent, right? Yeah, and then you can, there could be a lot of unsavory characters that will come into your life and, and hurt you. 
Yeah. Right? And yeah. Facebook's kind of the same way in, in who you select to be, you know, on your friends list. Yeah. See, like, right now, I have mine up, and I'm just posting music. This music I like, and it, it promotes a lot of violence and stuff, but it, it just it gets me going. Right, like, yeah, it, yeah. It keeps me a drive, and people think, like, portray it as, oh, that kid is a wannabe. Oh. It's an outlet of aggression. That's perfectly you know, fine. Like know, boxing. Like, but, um, right, people need to need outlets for that or writing. Right, people have different ways to kind yeah. of express that. Uh, that's a good, healthy way to to get it out of your system to put it right. out there. Um, now, can you tell me how to get back to West Gray Street? Yeah, <laughs> uh, West Gray Street's over there, right? You know, the Sunoco's at there's a Sunoco in town. A what now? A Sunoco. A Sunoco, what's that? That's where I parked at. A guy let me park there. I, I, yeah, all right. I'm going to check on my phone and uh, figure that out in a second, all right? Okay. All right. Why well, is you talking to you, though, man? <laughs> Never mattered to the so-called general public about my nation's situation and how we rise above it and they love it.